Joining us now via Skype from Yobe State is environmentalist Hamzat Lawal. Hamzat, good morning. It's good to have you join us right now. Now, we have been talking. I remember we've even hosted you several times on this topic uh, in the past. And sensitization has been going on at different levels, civil society organizations, uh, the media, and even different organizations. What impact are all of these having on the reality on ground from what you have observed? Well, good morning, Nigerian. Thanks for having me. Um, one in four Nigeria practice open defecation. Over 60 million Nigerians do not have access to toilets. Uh, so this is a crisis and it's a disaster waiting to happen because we know that uh, when you op openly defecate, this can uh, trigger cholera outbreak uh, in Nigeria. And when we talk about open defecation, let's say it what it is. This is about poverty. This is about dignity and ensuring that uh, our citizens actually have a dignified lifestyle. Mm. But again, for us to curb open defecation, we must have access to water. Mm. Uh, you know, here in Yobe State, uh, I was visiting a community yesterday. I found that the only access to water is, is a stream. And that same stream is when they openly defecate, they go and wash their hands uh, and also clean up. So what that tells you is this community is prone to uh, a disaster waiting to happen. So. For Nigeria to achieve op uh, open defecation free in 2025, and, and the president has signed an executive order, we need over 95 billion, uh, 950 billion naira to tackle open defecation. And when you look at the funding gap, it's quite huge because when you look at our budget appropriation and the money that goes to the Ministry of Water Resources, for instance, and of course the interministerial committee. There's lack of resources to achieve open defecation in Nigeria. And beyond that, you also need to look at investment in infrastructure and how do we design our households, particularly in rural communities. Do we have uh, government regulators go and ensure that every household, the planning, there is a plan for toilet and access to water? Because All right, so Hamza, goes hand in. what are the options uh, then, looking at this huge funding gap, uh, and the need for investment in this very, very uh, important area uh, to ensure that water is uh, sufficient for all and there are enough uh, public toilets for people to use. What are the options then? I'm glad you mentioned public toilets. So let's even go to a marketplace or some public school. Uh, in, in the market, for instance, when you go to Ikorutu market or when you go to Wuse market and you're pressed, and you look at how many access to toilets and water facilities do they have in this toilet, they're not enough. I think we need to see this from a private sector point of view to drive uh, investment, to drive revenue generation and to create jobs. Let's call it what it is. This is shit business. This is a business that can employ over 50,000 young people you know, across the country. This is a business that has potential to bring an investor and, and get private sector on board. You know, we have, we can even create an innovation around uh, uh, more small fee and then you use toilet and get access to water i believe that coronavirus have even brought an opportunity here even if we say uh there's this need to ensure that we wash our hands but when you don't even have water and then you openly defecate so you're not just only going to be prone to coronavirus or or maybe even laser fever you're prone to also infect other people around you i believe there's a huge potential here for private sector to invest uh, and for government to create jobs and also to increase Nigeria's GDP, but most importantly to ensure that Nigerians live a healthy lifestyle. All right, Hamza Lawa, let's leave it here now. Uh, certainly this conversation will continue so we can get to understand other aspects of this. Thank you very much for talking to us. Joining us now via Skype from your base state is environmentalist Hamzat Lawal. Thank you very much for joining us at, at this time. Uh, looking at this uh, war to eradicate open defecation in Nigeria with these alarming statistics, uh, where is the place for uh, punitive measures and even the reward system in, in, in this war? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, one out of four Nigerians openly defecate. And when you look at statistics, over 60 million people do not have access to a toilet facility. I believe that there is an opportunity here. We must understand that this is a crisis. This is a crisis waiting to happen because when people openly defecate, it means the communities are prone to cholera outbreak or other diseases. 
But as much as we also discuss open defecation, we need to also understand that uh, access to water uh, goes hand in hand. Because when people defecate, even if you have a toilet and you defecate and you don't have uh, water, then that means your hands would not be clean. And, and with the fact that we have coronavirus now, it's important that people wash their hands uh, more often. Uh, uh, but I believe there's an opportunity here because um, in as much as the president has signed a presidential order around keeping Nigeria clean and achieving open defecation free in 2025, uh, we need over 950 billion naira to achieve this. And, and I believe the role of private sector, uh, when you talk about incentives, this can create jobs and ensure economic uh, growth in the country. And if we do this, we might be on the pathway to achieving the sustainable development goal uh, ahead of 2030. But I believe there's an opportunity for increased investment, uh, particularly around businesses. Let's call it what it is. This is shit business. You know, this could create jobs for young people. When you go and shop in the market, uh, let's even take Balogo market. When you go and shop and you're pressed, uh, where do you, uh, uh, do you have toilet to use? Are the toilets enough? Is the water in this toilet? I believe that we can also come up with innovation where we have mobile toilets, where people just pay a small price and use uh, facilities so they remain clean. This is about dignity. This is about uh, quality lifestyle and health care for everyone. All right, Hamzat, uh, what is the bigger problem here? Is, is it the habits of the people over time that it has become very challenging for them to change habits? Or is it outrightly an issue of poverty and illiteracy where uh, people lack the, the access and lack uh, some, some of those facilities? What is really the bigger problem here if we have to make comparison? I think it's lack of understanding and awareness. And also for the, from the part of government is lack of enforcement. So when you approve building plans, for instance, do they look at if this building plan have a, a toilet facility embedded in them and access to water? So this goes a long way to ensure that when you uh, increase the capacity and knowledge of people to understand the importance of open defecation. And of course, this is poverty also, uh, because a lot of people are more concerned about you know, paying for health care, you know, uh, uh, affording a uh, three square meal. But they also need to understand that when you don't take care of your immediate environment, when you openly defecate and you don't wash your hands, you know, you are prone to go to the hospital every now and then and use your savings to pay for hospital bill. But I believe, again, uh, you know, government needs to regulate and enforce so that households, and when they approve a, a structural plan, there are a, a construction work around uh, toilet facility access to water. Hamzat Lawal, thank you very much for your contributions.